This right here is an example of just the type of market we are in. And in today's video, I think we got to unpack and pull back some of the curtain on some of the nefarious shit that's going on under the surface. Um, and that's actually more so in the social media space, uh, Twitter specifically. And what I want to do is I want to talk about some of the stuff that is actually kind of boggling my mind, but also really kind of pissing me off uh, about the trading and finance community on social media uh, because I think a lot of people are getting absolutely destroyed, burnt, fucked, whatever you want to call it, by a lot of people who have big, big influence, um, at least on some of these platforms. And I think a lot of us have been there and done that. So I want to make this video to kind of explain the realities of what's going on, A, and then B, why it's stupid, and then see the see what what do we have to do for ourselves, right? Like what can we do ourselves? And so we'll get to that point at the end here. Give me a few minutes to time to talk about what I mean, because I'm not gonna hold back in terms of language and stuff like that. I've kind of said at the beginning of this year that I'm not gonna hold back because it's not like kind of how I you know am anyway uh, in real life. And so we'll just run it up and uh, talk how it is. So what I want to start with first is number one, we're gonna talk about bias. And when I say bias, I mean bears who have been shorting, let's say from here or from December lows, cannot fucking believe what is happening in front of our eyes. They cannot believe it. They simply cannot believe it. And hey, I I, I hear you. I mean, I, I, it makes sense. Like, I mean, like, hey, a, lot of, a lot of things are kind of really concerning. Scratch your head like, huh, yeah, it's kind of weird. All right, well, we're going higher, I guess. I get it, don't get me wrong. But in this world, right? When it comes to watching the markets, you have two, two options. You have actually more, you have more than that, but two general options. And the way that I will phrase it <clears throat> is this option, a long-term investor, minimal. You don't care about these charts, these candlesticks. You could be someone like a Graham Stephan, someone that you probably, you know, read, originally followed getting into the finance space, watch their videos. Pretty cool. Get excited about investing. Like that's great. Awesome. Cool. Or you could be someone who is maybe trading actively, and you need to pay attention to these things and you want to pay attention to this because it can give you a clue for what happens next, which can maybe give you, put you on the plus side of probability that could ultimately make you money, right? So there's that. Those two people, person A, let's say Graham Stephan, and person B, let's just call him Blake, uh, for example, they are not the same. Blake should not talk to Graham and Graham should not talk to Blake about each other's profession because each other's profession are two different things. Trading and investing are not the same thing. If trading and investing were the same thing, or when you think about them in the same way, it leads to absolute blow up losses. I have been there. I will be first to say that I've lost tens of thousands of dollars. Lost a lot of money. A lot of the money that I made, a lot of money that I made during the COVID market. Oh, why? Because I treated trading like investing. Where you're wrong, well, I'll average in. I'll average in, I'll average down. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Where did that get me, right? The problem with these guys is that many, not not all, many were, were, were very short down here, okay? We bounced off the lows. Some were like, okay, we need to bounce, fine, whatever. And then back here, got very short again. Or back here, right? Saw that in rejection. Oh, here we go. Got short again. They'll pull their charts up. They'll pull this, they'll pull that. This time is different. Everyone says that, you know, this time is different. This time is not different. Whatever the hell you want to talk about. I don't care. Really give a shit. doesn't matter. I will zoom the chart out and say to myself, okay, what do I see, right? What do, what do I like objectively see? Not thinking I've got calls that expire in two months. Like hopefully we go up. No, I eliminated that type of trading to now shares. If I'm going to put a bias or I'm going to put a macro trade on like cycle type of trade, like, Hey, you know, rates, uh, a bond trade, or Hey, you know, an equity trade, or Hey, silver, gold, metals trade, right? I will put those on with shares of a stock, maybe a leveraged <clears throat> stock or ETF. This way I can capitalize on more upside or downside, but I'm gonna put shares on sell covered calls to minimize my downside. But then I have the shares. There's not really an expiration date there. Yes, with leverage ETFs, if you're wrong, yeah, sure. But I'm not holding these for 17 years. I'm not investing into a leverage ETF. I'm going to be actively managing a leverage ETF for the next 6, 12, 18 months, maybe a little longer, depending upon the cycle and how long things take to play out. If I'm going to make a bet, right? 
So I figured, or I found that way is the best way for me to still have my skin in the game, think about things, spend some time each month kind of game planning, you know, where I want or each, you know, quarter or whatever, because it's not a day-to-day thing where I want to be. Do I got to take some profits here? Do I got to cut this one off here? Right? Whatever. Based off of what I'm seeing macroeconomically, which by the way, I do have a background in, I actually do have a minor in energy business finance, a major in meteorology, if you want to call it, if you want to believe that, which I do from Penn State. Uh, which I think is at least worth noting. I never talked about that, but it's worth noting because a lot of people you'll follow, you know, and, and you don't need to have that stuff. Like I, I, I am 100% stand behind the idea of you don't need to have a degree to be successful, number one, and a degree to make money or for people to kind of follow you or to listen to your opinion because you could do it all without any experience. And I, and I, as I will always say, it was the worst financial, financial decision at the time of my life. Maybe it comes back to pay me at some point in the future from, you know, whatever, right? Meeting people and whatnot and the Penn State name, I guess, is what they kind of sell you on when you kind of go to school in the big school. Oh, the alumni network. Yeah, sure. Cool. I guess you could open the door, I guess, in the future. But in terms of like paying out of state tuition, because I was from Connecticut, paying out of state tuition, I got some, some small scholarships, paying out of state to go to Penn State ton of fucking money and I'm in debt. I'm, I have student loans because of that. And I'm paying them. Like I have been paying them private loans. Also have government loans. Those have been paused. Got all the privates are almost down to zero. So we almost got those done, which is great. And I'm, I'm managing the position that I was, or the, the hand that I'm dealt from myself. Uh, and you can't go back. So I'm not going to sit there and cry. Oh, relieve my debt. You know, I'm going to sit there and say, Hey, I made that decision. That was on me. I got to make it back and I got to come back out of it. And it is what it is. It'll make me a better person ultimately uh, and better with my money because of it, hopefully. Hopefully. But that's kind of a, a whole, I guess, rant. But people can't believe this type of move. It is what it is. Let's talk about some accounts. There are some good. Let's talk about the good first. This guy. When I say good, we're all, we're going to talk about, we're going to pull up a bunch of accounts on Twitter that are all bearish accounts. Like all these guys are pushing a bearish bias, a bearish narrative to their followers. And Many have lots of followers. For example, 74,000 followers. Has made a lot of money. Who knows what he's been doing now? Apparently all his trades should be like, you know, should be losing or many should be stopping out, you know, whatever. Uh, you can, again, you can fake the numbers. You can say this, you can say that. But what he's been saying essentially is with his, tech, with his technical analysis, which again, very valid people. And there's nothing wrong with these people. Like they, they sometimes provide good stuff. The problem is they've got their followers in this massive bearish bias that, it's going to go lower. It's going to break to the downside. Here we go. And then it just has, just hasn't been happening. And what's happening to the followers, they are getting absolutely fucked, 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 fucked by these guys because they're following these guys who they look up to. Okay. 15,000 views 15 minutes ago or three hours ago. Sorry, post this one, 46,000 views. I mean, there's, there are eyeballs seeing these types of things. Okay. But these guys, a lot of them don't want to admit that they're wrong right? They'll keep putting the head fake, the head, it'll be a head fake until eventually it's not a head fake, right? You can draw as many lines as you want. You can draw as many things as you want, pennants, flags, Elliott waves, trend lines, support or distance. And you can find on any time frame something that will fit the narrative that you want to push. You can find it. You can do it. You can literally find it on any time frame. Just adjust the scale, adjust the candlestick patterns, do bar charts, uh, do Heikinashis, like do jalog charts. Like literally you can change it up and you can figure it out, right? Connect the wicks to bodies or wicks to wicks or just bodies to bodies of candles. Like, yeah, you can, I'm sure you can do it. Um, but the problem is again, the problem is that people are following these people and they are losing money. And there's a lot less, this guy does some from what I've seen. And I don't follow anyone on this, on this Twitter account, which is down here. Um, I'm covering myself up, I know. But I don't follow anyone on this Twitter account. The reason why is because I want to have a clean slate. Although a lot of these guys will pop up in my, in my like for you Twitter feed because they have those, those for you and then who's your following. So some of them will pop in the for you and I'll just have me scrolling through like, oh my God, man. Oh my God. And it gets better. Here's another one. This guy has just kind of dug his feet in, not leaving short, 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 107,000 followers. Some of the views on these tweets, you know, 50K views, 11K views on a, on a reply. 50K views, man. It's a lot of eyes, right? Digging, 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 economy will free fall without the consumer. Like, I agree. Like, I think we can all come to some agreement that this is very possible. And the statement, the last statement, with the, without the consumer, the economy will free fall. Like, yeah, like it probably will. Again, the whole thing is, if these companies, we'll, we'll get to in one second, 
from an example from some bigger names, or at least one bigger name that you may already know. Um, when people stop spending money and max credit cards out and now can't afford it, lose jobs, like, yeah, like companies go bankrupt. You're going to see a lot of tightening. You're going to see a lot of people losing their jobs. You're going to see a lot of earnings contracting. The reality is that right now we're kind of stuck in this narrative for now. It could change. It will always be changing of, well, you know, uh, inflation's coming down and earnings aren't as bad, aren't terrible yet. So maybe we got a soft landing here. And that soft landing narrative could go on for like three, maybe a month, three months, six months. You know, if it goes on that long, right, that could pr prolong a bounce back in the markets, which will then blow out all shorts. It will blow out all the shorts, right? blow them out, destroyed. If you're still holding, I mean, good luck on that. If that's the scenario, right? Seriously, a lot of money on the sidelines, a lot of shorts to still be squeezed out. I mean, we could be at all time highs, as crazy as that sounds, faster than you think, because the S&P right now, from where we finished on this Tuesday, is only 15% away. Hey, it's a long way to go, I understand. That's like double a, an average yearly return roughly, but we are up about 19 off the bottom. So, so maybe 15 more isn't that far off. No, we don't have to go all the way there, right? No, but five, 10% more gets you up into the talk of the conversation that, hey, we're right here. You know what I mean? So as crazy as it sounds, not sitting here saying like, oh, perma bear, perma bull, bullshit, any of that stuff. But right now we're at a point in my view <clears throat> where you have those two arguments, like the investor versus the trader, right? Two different things. The trading side of things, you don't want to have the bias. You are trying to take an investing approach to the downside. And some guys are even calling for like the black swan event. I mean, I can't believe that. Talk about that. Like talk about crazy. You got guys out here calling for a black swan event, trying to time a black swan. The whole point of a black swan is that it's not something that you can see coming. It's an event that you cannot see coming. That's what a black swan is. You can't time the fucking black swan, dude. Okay. Potential is certainly there as it is at any time, but you can't time it. Another guy, an example right here, stuck like a freaking, I don't even know what you want to call it, into the bearish argument. All I see from this guy popped through, all I see, and you look in his account, all you see, NDX keeps getting more expensive, rising rates, falling UI, makes zero sense. That's where a lot of people are at. It makes no sense or it's not easy to make sense of what's happening but at some point, you got to have risk management in place. And this is where things get a little more interesting. So these are all just examples of guys who have big followings and whatnot. There's more out there. There's more like this, 140,000 followers out there. Okay, cool. Even more. Okay, whatever. This one, oh, wait, I, for, I didn't realize I was blocked by this guy. That's actually hilarious. That, that just must have happened, like literally just now. Um, why? Well, I probably could figure it out. If I go to my account and I can see... This guy is a perfect example, right? This, I, I put up this, this tweet from a couple you know, days ago. Example of two idiots. One is Meet Kevin, social media guy, YouTube guy, whatever you want to call it. Um, makes a lot of money, is very well, financially cool. That's great. Whether you like him or not, I don't really care. Sells, uh, as I mentioned in the tweet, you know, two idiots. One sells spots on his private jet to his followers. Other comments on macroeconomics has no fucking clue he's talking about, uh, as in this guy. Now, this guy is apparently Blake. Let's call, let's call him Blake, right? Blake the trader. Uh, apparently makes a lot of money. If you go to his profile, I'm sure you can look him up and you can find um, his profit posts. He posts some profits and screenshots and stuff. Okay, cool. Um, is it real? Anyone can fake it, you know, all the time. Anyone can fake these types of things, but let's just say it's real. What's amazing to me is that Blake is going to comment on things that he has no clue what he's talking about. Blake's like 20 years old, right? Me, Kevin's, you know, 30 something years old, I believe, um, you know, is knows what he's talking about in the finance space, whether you like what he says, whether you believe in his, you know, his investments or not, whatever, right? doesn't matter. But he's talking about inflation dying down, right? Me, Kevin, by looking through earnings reports. Then you got Blake out here who probably doesn't know what the fucking earnings report is, let's be honest, okay? In terms of the reality, like reading through an earnings report, probably has no clue what it is. And you don't, and you, I'm nothing against the guy. Like you don't need to know. Like I'm not saying like you fucking suck because you don't know how to read an earnings report. I, I barely know how to read half the shit in there. You know what I mean? Does it matter to me? Like, to be honest, from right now, I don't give a shit about half of these, com most of these companies' earnings. Like, yeah, like I watched the reaction, watched hit the big takeaways, take what I can take away. I'm not investing in individual names right now. I'm buying ETFs at this point in time. I'm buying dividend stocks for the long term if I'm investing. And outside of that, like putting on head, like I'm not sitting there 
saying to myself like, oh, I got to buy, you know, I got to look at these earnings so I can pick, you know, between Apple, Tesla, Amazon, AMD, like which one I want to buy. I'm not, I don't care. It doesn't matter. That's not part of what I, my strategy is right now, uh, especially with all the uncertainty. I don't want to be caught in a stock of an earnings report or this or that that gets, that screws me, right? He goes, what earnings calls have you been listening to? Obviously, we haven't listened to the same ones. 80% are awful and getting lower. The pinnacle of stupidity. Now, you're just commenting because, you know, me, Kevin's got a lot of followers and you can suck some followers from him to you, right? And then you're selling. He also sells a Discord. So, you know, it's part of that game too. And the negativity gets more interactions, I guess. The reality is, and, and when you take shots at the big dogs, like, oh, look at me, I'm taking a shot at the big dog who's got a lot of followers, a lot of, you know, clout, social media attention, whatever. Here's the reality. Dude, Kevin's talking about inflation on the earnings calls. You're talking about guidance. If inflation's coming down, these companies are going to be guiding lower as there's less demand. There's less demand for their products, less sales numbers. They're not doing the same things that they maybe were able to do the past couple of years. And that's what they're actually showing you in the reports. The reports may not necessarily be great guidance wise, but Kevin didn't comment on that. He commented on what he's seeing in terms of inflation. So two guys going talking about different things. No idea what they're talking about. Stupid. But you want to go further from that? Apparently, apparently Blake, apparently has posted some profits and he's posted a lot and he may make a lot of money and may, and may be very well and be a consistent trader and do this and do that, whatever. No. If you're, if that's the case, dude, awesome. That's great. Like I, that's awesome to see. I'm happy to see that. It's not, not many people can do that and, and be consistently profitable. And you're doing it during a very difficult time. Like we just saw the S and P today with fucking up and down, left and right. You know, it was like, Oh my God, how do you gauge it? You can't gauge direction. It's just kind of random, right? Go to new high, sell off, go to new low bounce. Like, what is this? Right. But, but when, when you see this, I go, Oh dude, you know, if you were trying to make the argument that you're doing well here, this is not the piece of evidence. This is absolutely not the piece of evidence that you want to be dropping. Please never, if you see this run far away, far away, I'll show you the losses. I'll show you the wins. I'll go into the accounts live on Saturday like we always do. Um, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to pull up my January trades, write them down on a notes document that I have to edit myself. 20%, 30%, this, this, this. Post three losses. The comment below is hilarious. You have been shorting stocks since the October lows and you have three losses. <laughs> you can't make it up, but that's social media for you. So, you know, take a step back sometimes and, and think about who you're following, what's going on. But the reality is, and the reason why I think I got blocked is I called the guy out by saying like, dude, the reality here is if this is real, right? Number one, you can just show the results on the, you know, on your account statements if you wanted to, but if you don't want to do that, okay, fine whatever. You don't want to go in. Oh, it has your account numbers. Oh, it's too personal, whatever. Then fine. At least talk about, because what's impressive here is that he didn't, he didn't put down puts or calls. If you would go by his tweets, like they have, there has been not one fucking bullish tweet this guy has posted since October, right? If you go by his tweets, you would think he's been shorting, 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 hence the comments. But he's made money. He's had, you know, whatever, 30 trades that were green and three that were red. I mean, that's awesome. Like there is something incredible there that we can, that your followers can learn from, whether it's, I was wrong on my bias. I adjusted, I took the other side and I did this, or I was wrong. I stopped out for a small loss and it was able to be okay because I had the small losses and the bigger wins and I was good. If that's like, that's what's more important for your followers then being bearish as fuck, coming out saying green, 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 look at me every day, I'm green every day, had a great month. And your followers go, dude, I don't understand how you were green because you were so bearish this entire month. It makes no sense. Like that's a huge red flag. But again, you're doing a disservice to the followers that you're now building because they're following you because you look like you're doing well and you're posting profits. They're following you for that reason. Uh, and now you're not teaching them the realities of how, you, how you're doing it. Like, no one's fucking talking about that shit, right? No one talks about the stop loss. No one talks about, oh, when I'm wrong, I did this. Or, oh, my win rate's been pretty bad. My win rate has been fucking dog shit the past, past like month. It's been horrible. And I think a lot of it goes to when you see charts like this, you know, it's, it's very difficult to kind of gauge. Yeah, there were signs of support, resistance levels, right? Sure. But, you know, from yesterday's action, right? 
SPY comes down, goes to lows here. Today, we undercut those lows. This morning, okay, made sense for a bounce, right? Came down to that same level and bounce, right? Undercut those lows, then not just bounce, but go up and hit a new high of the day in the next like hour and a half. <laughs> like, let me tell you, like that is not easy to trade, right? Especially for someone who's not scalping like two minute moves. You know what I mean? It's not easy to get a gauge. Of, of, we don't have clear direction. And even if this market wants to, to grind higher, it's seemingly, as of right now, it's not doing so in a nice, consistent, easy, easy fashion. If it seems like it wants to go higher, it's taking a difficult route or a choppy route to get there. Maybe overall, other stocks, it's a different story, um, to get to end up going higher, which again, makes it difficult to make money on the upside. And then once people turn bullish, then that could be the door wide open for the backside, right? From a, sen from a sentiment perspective. So again, nothing against these guys. Like I think what's more important to take away is that these guys are being idiots because they're not talking about the other side. And if you wanna stick into your ways and you don't wanna come across, this guy, I thought he was a really cool trader back in the day. This guy is also from fucking October, has not posted one bullish argument at all and has not recognized the fact that we're going higher. It just seems like everything is down, down, down. You wanna go out and pull up these things put flow on the S&P, heavy for out the money strikes. I mean, you can go and find anything. Go on like unusual whales, go on all these different um, softwares that track option flow. You can go and find put flow. And if you want to find uh, you know, more put flow than call flow, I'm sure you can mess around with the settings and you can find it. I mean, you can find it. Don't get me wrong. Those things can be helpful. Don't get me wrong. They could be useful. They can spot when someone knows something. But in a time like this, I just find on the S&P, it's not very useful. It really is not. Uh, it's just about finding the right ones to fit your narrative to then post on social media to then say, hey, look at this. It's scary. Get ready. Because that's what gets the clicks and the views, right? So this stuff is fucked. Uh, I'm sorry for, the, I guess, the language if you're not used to it. But um, I don't know. It's just how it is. It's just calling it like it is, I think, at this point in time, which is kind of funny because of how wrong these guys have been. I'm not sitting here saying that I've been right. Like I, like I said, you know, <laughs> I've been taking the I've been taking the backhand too. Um, the past year or so. And I got caught in this type of stuff, but I think it's, you know, recognizing it and learning right now. My, my biggest focus is like building a system and strategy for myself that has nothing to do with bearish, bullish bias. It's about price action. It's about risk management so that I can create something that I can rely on day after day versus having to be right on a macro, you know, thesis on a specific time frame. A lot easier to lose a lot of money that way. Um, so hope it was helpful. If you got something out, thumbs up button. I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace out.